Welcome to episode 61 of the World Builders Anvil. As always, I'm your host, Jeffrey W. Ingram, and today's topic, the Curric Spirit Magic. Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place that will help prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builders Anvil. I'm your host, Jeffrey W. Ingram. Let's sup from the mug of Java and build. Welcome back. And today's topic is a form of spirit magic that is part of the Bedrakim culture in my world of Garduel, and it is called Kurik. And you might look at the spelling and go, how is it spelled that way? Well, it's the phonics of the Bedrakim culture. Uh, it wouldn't be spelled quite that way in English, even though I'm using uh, Western characters to put it on the show notes. Okay, so quickly, there are a couple basic uh, inspirations that went into this. It's a religion slash magic system. It's a magic system for the Kirk religion. And it is the little bit that we do know about ancient druids. They draw heavily from the religion and the alphabet. So there's actually some probably like, like Norse influence in there as well too. With ruins symbolizing gods and having magical powers. So there's probably a little bit of that influence in there too. Now, the basics of the Kirk is based on the earliest religion of the culture, sort of the Bedrakan paganism. Um, it draws from those gods and the spirits from the world. It also takes into account the idea of life forces, which was an influence from another culture in the area called the Sierra. And the life forces are plants, animals, sentient beings, and, and spirit beings, things that exude life. And M objects are not places of magic for them. But being a spirit-based religion, the things that are, are important in the way I run it in Garduel is rituals, locations, and time. So rituals are a wide variety of things. They involve either growing new life or sacrificing existing life. And usually growing something over time is more powerful magic. However, it, it takes a lot more time to do that. One of the marriage rituals is someone goes off and plants a plant in the forest. And the person who's supposed to marry them will find that plant when they do then that's a sign that they should be married. And they're special plants because this is magic. This is not strictly something in nature. And so the idea is, in the ritual, the plant is bound to a spirit which connects the two people. If they're meant to be together, then the other person will actually find the plant. If they're not meant to be together, then the person will never find the plant. And that's one way of making sure in this old-style religion that people are meant to be together. And then when they get married, the plant will, in another ritual will be sacrificed to ensure the longevity of their marriage. So those are two sort of quick rituals that can be done. Now, most, so the rituals usually have more to do with creating potions, elixirs, balms, these types of things that can be used to help heal people, get rid of sickness, create fertile crops. Um, these are the typical things that the religion and magic are focused around there. Most of the magic is what I call indirect magic, where spirits are bound to items either temporarily or for a long term. And the spirit connection with the materials in them are very important. They don't typically use permanent things because uh, life is not permanent. So you don't see structures or holy symbols uh, to the religion that exist. Holy sites would be sort of your mystical groves. Strong holy sites in my world have these pools of water uh, with special groves. Around the groves grow special trees and plants and herbs that are that are typically the things that are used in the rituals to create long life, do these things. They're the types of plants that are typically used as sacrifices to spirits to get them to aid the spellcaster in doing the trick because in spirit magic, if you remember from a previous episode where I talked about my magic in general, 
the person who's trying to cause the effect does not themselves does not themselves have the ability to manipulate magic or shape magic in my world in any way. They use spirits of varying forms to tasks needed to create the magic, to shape the magic. So they act as a medium, an intermediate person dealing with the spirit. The rituals are meant to pay off the spirits so they don't get mad. Failure in doing these kind of things can be catastrophic as the spirit might take a disliking to you. The spirit might do what you want to, but over-strengthen it. The spirit might twist in some way what you're asking it to do. And that's one of the flaws with this kind of magic. It's, it's powerful in a sense because the magic is strong, but the thing that limits it is since the person themselves is not directly creating the effect that they want to do, they're relying on this intermediate force to do it. Now, in general, most of the Carrick, uh, spells, for lack of a better word, uh, magic effects are indirect. If you want someone to love you, they have to drink a potion or you have to, uh, give them a gift that they accept. It's not forced upon them and it, it's enhanced and engaged once they're in contact with this intermediate object that's usually created, whether it be a potion or something a little bit more permanent, like, like a, a weave of hair in a, in a plant that is used as a necklace or, or, but it's non-permanent stuff. There aren't going to be stones in the stuff. Um, not even for ornamentation. They are meant to be impermanent objects. And that's just one of the restrictions that the spirits in this area operate on. The spirits that are connected to the Bedrachum. That's the way they operate. The Bedrachum have to comply with their wishes. Now, you can do direct effect magic. However, you need very powerful spirit. For lack of a better word, gods. And these would be sort of your classic pagan gods. Or spirits that are so powerful, they're to the mind of the person interacting with them. They're like a god. The sacrifices for those types of magic are extreme. It's usually life, uh, the life of a sentient being or a spirit. And when the spirit life might not be permanently gone, it would have to be sacrificed from our plane of existence out to the God to do the work. Very rarely are these things even attempted. Um, the mere fact that you try could get you killed. Usually, especially gods don't like to be forced to do things. If you sacrifice and ask them is one thing, but when you're doing magic, it's not asking, it's telling, it's forcing. Sometimes spirits and gods, once again, for a lack of a better word, can be problematic. Now, common traits that show up in people who perform this kind of magic. Traits are, once again, this generic thing that I throw together that I can reuse for different characters to share a common effect. Much like uh, many role-playing games have things like this where you know, a word will mean a certain thing. And most of these are going to kind of make sense. Spirit connection. And that's just you're connected to either a spirit directly. You know, it's sort of the Indian idea of a uh, spirit guide. But there's a specific spirit that is willing to help you. Um, that will give people the ability to perform this kind of magic. Even though it might be a bit more limited because you're dealing with one spirit and their abilities that are enhancing yours. And uh, their ability to shape magic. Spirit speech, you can talk to spirits. You can actually negotiate with spirits and ask them what they want and try and get it. It's a little bit longer to pull off maybe because you can't directly control a spirit through a spirit speech outside of your ability to convince it to do what you want it to. Spirit sight, not needed, but it allows the purveyor of the magic to see the spirits in which they're interacting. Easier to find spirits that way. Uh, channeling, this ability to sort of bring a spirit to you and then you can channel it out into something or medium uh, where you actually are possessed by a spirit and that is in a way in part of your sacrifice to get them to perform a task for you. The writing for this episode is this is the intermediate topic and a lot of the worlds where I see magic they are not culturally bent or twisted. I think it's a cool thing to at least think about Especially if you're doing into writing, I think it adds a little bit more detail and flavor into a culture. Um, however, it doesn't uh, need to be, so I bring it a little bit higher as intermediate. The world building task for the day. The world building task for the day is mold magic to a culture you've created. So take one of the cultures you've created, 
Um, especially one that's probably a little bit less developed where you haven't thought much about magic. Take the magic rules as they exist in your world and apply it through the, the lens of the culture. How would they look to interact with magic? The real world task for the day. Surround yourself with loved ones and friends. It's a good thing to do, especially when you're having troubled times. As much as you can, interact with your friends and loved ones. Take a little extra time and pour it towards that. A little less time towards getting stuff done. Um, because it helps keep you sane when times are stressful. The tease for this episode is Upcoming Things, Thanos and the Infinity Bomb. And as always, make sure to go to Garduel.com. That's G-A-R-D-U-L.com for the show notes. It'll be under Podcasting, World Builders Anvil. That's a great place to get all of the information from the episode that you've just listened to and to see all the resources that we've talked about in this episode. Thanks for joining us this episode of the World Builders Anvil. Please be sure to rate and review us in iTunes, and please help get the word out to your friends about our show. And join me, Jeffrey W. Ingram at Garduel.com to see the progress of my world and learn why I made the choices I did. And please contact me and let me know the topics you would love to hear in the future. Now strike, why the myth rolls high.